make sure when they give that football off on that zone read, just like that time, they stop the runner coming up the middle. And so far today, they've had guys in position almost every time to make the tackle. Every once in a while, the running back has made a miss. Drops back into the shotgun on second and seven. Wide to the left. As Kaepernick thought about it. Look out. And he's tipped up by Arthur Jones. A fumble recovery and now a sack for Jones and a loss of six. Good no throw though by Colin Kaepernick. He is going to throw this down the middle to Vernon Davis. Watch. But look at the safety is anticipating. This is Steve Tasker, sideline reporter for the uh, Super Bowl 47. If you're expecting to hear our friend Jim Nance, it may be a moment before he gets on. Half the power in New Orleans Stadium, the Superdome here, is out. In almost a perfect semicircle of the lights, half the stadium stayed light. Half of it went out. The scoreboard is also not working as well. And here's what happened. Moments ago, as we watched the game start to proceed pretty much as normal, one big click of the light switch, and we lost power in the half of the stadium. Now it's well lit. There's no danger. No one's in, injured or of any kind. But obviously the players are milling around, and we've got a lot of officials running around wanting to get this game back on. We will step away for a moment. And we will continue our coverage of Super Bowl 47 right after this. Sports is sponsored by Iron Man 3. Go online now for an extended look at Iron Man 3. Coca-Cola. There's still time to vote and decide for who will win the Coke. And by Ram Trucks. Built with honor, forged with pride. Guts, glory, Ram. Welcome back to New Orleans. We are still without power in half of the stadium. Jim Nance, Phil Sims will be back with us shortly as the NFL works feverishly to get the power back on. As we have a moment as the players now beginning to realize this may be a little bit of a delay as different players sitting out on the field starting to stretch, trying to stay loose. And really, as bewildered as the rest of the crowd here, trying to stay on top of what's happened. No question this game or this delay is going to affect in some way the momentum of this game coming out just after halftime after the long return by Jacoby Jones. And as I stand here on the field looking around, the fit players milling around, I'm going to throw it across the field to my colleague Solomon Wilcott. Solly, what have you got on your side of the field? Well, thanks, Steve. You know, I've been paying attention to the players for the Baltimore Ravens. Right now, they are very much bewildered. They're asking questions, what's going on. They're asking, how long is this going to take? Right now, the coaches are just trying to create some kind of organization here on the sideline, trying to help the players and not worry about things they can't control, asking them to stretch, make sure they stay loose. And I thought Steve made a really good point when he talked about maybe this robbing the Baltimore Ravens of momentum that had been seized by the long kick return by Jacoby Jones. This is one of those anomalies that doesn't really occur here at Super Bowls, and I think the coaches and players are going to try to deal with it the best they can. All right, right now we have our guys set up, the studio guys. JB, let's send it over to you. Well, as is obvious to the viewers at home, we have a power outage here at the Superdome. There was a surge in the building, and all of the lights have been knocked out. Some are now starting to slowly come back on. As soon as they have restored power, then, of course, the players will come back on the field. So it may well be about a 15-minute process to recycle the lights. But while we have this opportunity, we'll talk about the game. And certainly you saw what happened at the start of the second yeah. half. I know Shannon got extremely excited. What was it that you saw? I see the surge in the building. It's called the Baltimore Ravens. I felt the 49ers were living on dangerous waters, Coach. 
kicking the ball to Jacoby Jones. That was 109 yards, but the ball had a low trajectory. And normally when someone kicks the ball that far deep in the end zone, the opposing team, they relax. Jacoby Jones had in his mind, when he caught that ball, he was bringing it out. They didn't relax, the 49ers did, and it's the longest return for a touchdown in Super Bowl history. You know, one thing that happens when you go into halftime, you always say the most important series of a game the is first the first one. series of both halves, offensively and defensively. You know, you're thinking you're not going to have a kickoff return going back to you, but I think right now in this game, you know, San Francisco defense is going to have to come up with some turnovers. I know Baltimore's been aggressive. When you look at the scoreboard right now, I think they're going to play with the lead and use the clock. I would say on offense, run the ball. You can still be somewhat aggressive, but I would come out of the huddle late. I would snap the ball with less than five seconds. I had the clock to my advantage. I shortened the game. Yep. And for San Francisco, they need to let Kaepernick open this up and make some plays with his legs. Here's the problem, you know, with uh, Kaepernick, though. He has never really been in this situation. No. Only. He's not in a situation where he's always had a running game. And now he's going to have to drop back and throw every down. And they've had a problem running the football. So he's never really been in this situation. This is something he's going to have to deal with. But I'll tell you, the thing, I, I think right now the teams have to stay loose. And the other element of this is I think we're seeing Colin Kaepernick has only played 10 games, Shannon. You don't see them in a hurry-up mode. Even at the end of the first half, he still has to huddle up. This is where his inexperience really is now going to really pay a go so against So let me ask them. a question yes, collectively of you guys. We know what San Francisco is capable of doing. They did that against Atlanta. How do you guys read the body language to tell whether or not that was a knockout shot to their confidence or not? Well, there's no doubt it's a knockout to their confidence, and they have to find a way somehow when they get when this whole thing comes back on, we get back on the field, start playing again. They need to score a touchdown on that first drive. It's going to be so critical for them, for the 49ers, to score just to get back in the game somehow and get some kind of momentum going. This is not the Atlanta Falcons they're playing. We've seen the San Francisco 49ers one other time play a ball game like this, and it was a Sunday night in Seattle. They got steamrolled. The game got away from, from them. Before the lights went out, Coach, I had a strong suspicion this game was about to get away from the 49ers. You know, the other thing is, I, you know, I sat there and we were watching it. We said, okay, you still have time, but there's no sense of urgency. And I don't think it's a lack of not having urgency. I think they it's a lack of having experience. Yeah. And he's not comfortable. He's still trying to make checks at the line of scrimmage. The clock is right now Your an enemy. enemy against him. It's an ally. And so if I'm sitting back right now, I'm Baltimore. I'm letting them dump him off. Go back and huddle because you are almost becoming your worst and ever worst enemy because it's taking you so long to call plays. Yeah. All right, we're going to step aside for a quick timeout. We'll come back to the Superdome again. Electrical power issues here. Back with more in a moment. Back inside of the Superdome. For those of you who may just be tuning in, let me reiterate the situation here in the Superdome. There was a power surge that knocked out a number of the lights in the building. Some have come back on, but in order to go through a full cycle, it may well take about 15 more minutes. So with that in mind, we're taking this opportunity just to bring you up to speed at what's taking place in the game so far. We'll do that by embellishing the talk with some highlights. All right, Coach. All right, first of again, all, you look at Joe Flacco right here. He got the matchup with Navarro Obama and Anquan Bolton over the middle right there, Shannon. Yeah. And you talked about that matchup for this, in this game. Everybody knows the 49ers like to play cover two down in the red zone. They got the perfect matchup. Play yeah. fake. Dennis Pitta from, Ed, from uh, Joe Flacco. As far as this, you know, John Harbaugh, he's trying to put put a, a big distance in, in it as far as taking a chance on that extra point. And then here's the kickoff return by Jacoby Jones. He goes 109 yards. You know, and what's ironic about this is John John Harbaugh is a special teams coach. And you can see the, the special teams coach in him coming out, making a field goal, a kickoff return for a touchdown. It's amazing. We've talked about offense and defense all, all week in these two matchups. But right now, the special teams have played a huge factor. In there was, you like there the way was, he's been aggressive, though. Take there was no chance. doubt in Jacoby Jones mind when oh, he caught that yeah, ball he was coming out he could have been 110 yards if they didn't call him out of bounds he was bringing that ball out of the end zone he's got a record the 49ers this power outage might serve the 49ers quite yeah. well because no, it, it broke the momentum of this ball game and I think right now again it's, it was so quickly coming out of halftime I don't think it's going to disrupt these teams it's just like another longer halftime right now all right, for more on the situation here at the Superdome, let's check in with one of our other announcers, Steve Tasker. One of the things you can see, the lights are slowly beginning to come back on. The 49ers have been through this on a Monday night game last year. They had the lights go out in candlestick. They had a big delay in that game. I was told right now on the field 
by the alternate official. This may last as much as 20 minutes. In fact, I signaled over. Jim Harbaugh didn't want to come over, but I told him what the official had told me. He's nodded his head and said thanks. He hadn't been told that either. Solomon Wilcox had a chance to speak to John Harbaugh on the other sideline. Solly? Yes, Steve. It was actually John Harbaugh that told me it would be about 15 minutes before the power would be back on. Now, that was about five minutes ago. He was just going around telling each and every last one of his players to get the mind right, to prepare themselves to finish this football game. I went over and I talked to a couple of the players. They were very focused. They believe that they are on the brink of winning a championship, and they're not going to allow the power going out to really deter or distract their focus. So right now, players are just continuing to focus and get ready to go back into the ball game. So they're going to keep the players out on the field right now. They're going to not take them in to the locker room. They're going to continue to stretch here on the field. Got to get ready to go win a championship. That's the Baltimore Ravens. Now let's send it over to JB. All right, Sally, thank you very much. Let me turn to Coach Bill Cower and ask, from a coaching perspective, in circumstances like this, what's your biggest concern? What would you be telling your team on both sides? Well, the concern I have is that you're sitting around and just looking at the surroundings. And you start, you start to think about what it can be. You start to speculate about the championship. If you start thinking about it, it's too soon. You're still in the midst of this game. You start thinking about what you have to do. You have a, If I'm Baltimore, i got a scrambling quarterback. i got some playmakers. I'm not looking at the clock. I want to make sure I'm doing my job and stay loose and stretch. They have the football. And they get a score right now, they're going to feel like they're back in this game because this guy Colin Kaepernick can make plays. And Joe B Flacco's in there, and he, he, he's not even warming up right now. I mean, he's like uh, Captain Cool Joe, right? Now. He's throwing these touchdown passes. He's fine. And like you said, Coach, he's just got to use the clock in the second half, not make any big mistakes, take that clock down to uh, three, four seconds before every time he runs a play and stay a little bit aggressive. JB, I'm not saying the fat lady is singing, but they cut the power out so she can warm up in darkness. <laughs> Biff you know, break, Biff break, Coach, Biff break really does help the 49ers. No, it this does. game was about to get away from, from them. Joe Flacco hasn't played in about 45, 50 minutes of this ball game. You know, I, so I'm anxious to see how he does when he gets back on the field. I'm just looking on the sidelines. I wish Jim Harbaugh right now would be taking Colin Kaepernick and say, listen, son, we probably have not been in this position before. There's got to be a sense of urgency in getting the plays called. You make sure you're still comfortable. You've got to be in control. But the clock is not our ally right now. It's different than having a whole half to make up 20 points. You're now looking at a... a, a 20, 21 point deficit against a good team in the Super Bowl. There has to be more of a sense of urgency. Let me Once just bring again, the audience up to, up yeah. to speed here, the viewers, that the league spokesman has just told us that the power is slowly returning. They're pleased with the way that power is being ramped back up. And again, right now, I know you've heard a couple of different time frames, but we've just been told from now about another 15 minutes is what it will take as power continues to ramp up and the teams have been asked to stay on the field. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, no, you see, when you look at this again, once again, Colin Kaepernick has never really been in this situation before. Every game he's played kind of in his 10 starts, it's always been, like you said, Coach, go up to the line of scrimmage, take your time, make your checks. He's not in a situation where he has a running game that's been working for him. So he don't know exactly which way to go as far as that's concerned. Well, Dan, there, there, there's light. The light just came on, Shannon, the no. other half. So we have you some... No, 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 the light comes I, I would just, I would just, I'm just going to throw this out there. And I can... J, uh, Jim Harbaugh knows his team better than I. I believe Alex Smith could run a one-minute possibly with a much quicker pace than Colin Kaepernick. He won't give you the threat. He would not give you, you know, the element of, you know, the improvision the, the that, that Kaepernick can do. But he may be able to be more efficient in this backup. And I'm just saying, I don't know, again, because he's been in this offense a lot longer. He's been in this league longer. He yeah. has run the one minute in a situation. I, this I, guy, the his problem is game. Alex Smith could take off and run and give you a big play also with his strong arm. I know he hasn't done it, but you got to put him in this situation. Alex Smith hasn't played in how long? I mean, I, I'm not sure I would do that. All JB, I have no special power, so when I say let there be light, it's still out. But here's the thing. <laughs> it is a blessing and the sky, a blessing and a curse that Colin Kaepernick only has 10 starts. Yes. The 10 starts mean he doesn't know what he's in for. But on the flip side, the 10 starts, he's never been in this situation before. So the being down 22 points in the Super Bowl, it's one thing to be down 20, 21 points, I mean, hey, 17 points in a championship game. But this is the biggest stage you'll ever be on in your professional life. And I'm not insinuating that you go right now to Alex Smith. I'm just throwing it out for food for thought. We're up here talking about what you're thinking about. And I would just think about my back of my mind. 
who can now give me a better chance to get more plays run when I start getting behind in this situation? Well, the 49ers need to start eating some of that food of your thought because they need to find something that's going yeah. to get them jump started from the yeah. coach. When they, when they turn that football over, this has been a totally different football team. Yeah. And I said at the start of the show, if you turn the football over in the Super Bowl, you pay double. The, the Ravens did what they were supposed to do. They punished them with a touchdown. They didn't get a field goal. Right. They punished them with a touchdown, and they haven't looked back since. You know, Let I me co tell on what you just said, Shannon. You talked about at the start of the show. When it came time for you guys to select teams, Coach was the only one who felt convincingly that the Ravens would win. Now, the game is still far from over. I get that. But what is Pretty it that close. you saw about the Ravens that gave you comfort they could be doing what they're doing? JB, it's just, it's just the way they've been playing in this postseason. You know, they, they, they have been flawless. This defense, they have shut down the top quarterbacks in the National Football League. And you have a quarterback who is red hot, who has a pretty good running game. And I'll tell you, McKinney and Orr, they have been bookends. And you still have not seen Joe Flacco. He's been one sack in this game. But he is comfortable in that pocket. And, you know, I thought the 49ers would be able to run the ball a lot better against the Baltimore Ravens. They just haven't been able to do that. And that's what the uh, 49ers game. I mean, that's their game plan. That's their bread and butter. That's what they got to do. They got to come downhill. Frank Gore used that read option pistol offense, and it just really hasn't worked for him. And Kaepernick has thrown some bad, has some bad throws. Or a couple, you know, the interception ball's been sailing on him a little bit. We got to find a way to get something going. The first possession that they get the ball. You know, I talk, talking to uh, talking to Ray, he said, "Shay, this team cannot beat us with Colin Kaepernick running the football. He is a one read guy. He looks to Crabtree and he takes off." We're going to take Crabtree away from him. We're going to make him go to his second and third receivers. We believe we can get home in that amount of time. And that, They've done a great job on him thus far. And they really have, Shannon, because to that point, you take Crabtree away. Randy Moss, you've seen them try to target Randy Moss in this game, but he has been a non-factor in this game. Where you see on the other side, you have Jacoby Jones, you have Bolden, you have Torrey Smith. They've all made plays along with their tight ends. More weapons have shown up in this game for Baltimore than they have right now. And for as, they take, as they take a look around the stadium, we see that there are more and more banks of lights that are starting to come on. And again, we're just reminding those who you know may what? just have tuned in that we did have a power surge here in the Superdome. We lost power for a few moments. We were told it would take it between 15 and 20 minutes. We're probably about 10 minutes in right now, but we do see more lights coming on. The players have been asked to stay on the field because as soon as power has been fully restored, play will resume. Shannon, Beyonce must have knocked the lights out, man. No, that, that power surge was the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> All right, as we continue to bring you up to speed, let's check in now with Solomon Wilcox. Well, guys, right now I've been told that the league is not prepared to make a statement in terms of what knocked the power out here. They're right now trying to assess the problem. Soon as they know, they're going to let us know someone's going to come down and we'll be able to interview them or we'll be able to gather more information to ascertain what exactly happened or what knocked out the power. We're told that it's only a matter of minutes before they will fully restore the power. As I'm standing here right now, the stadium appears to be getting brighter and brighter, just gradually, and right now it's almost fully back and I expect them to maybe start playing any moment. JB let's send it back over to you. All right Solomon thank you so very much and again as we take a look at the pictures we can see that a number of the banks of lights up around the rim of the inside of this Superdome are in fact coming back just about fully and as soon as they have returned full power again play will be underway and again I was listening Boomer. to the guys in acutely that maybe this will serve the best interest of San Francisco because Baltimore certainly has played ex exceedingly well. Let's take a look again at what Baltimore has done well. And Juan Bolden on the barrel booming. Perfect situation for Joe Flacco. He throws in the back of the end zone. That was an easy picking for him for a touchdown. And then Joe Pitta Flacco. in the back of the end zone also. Time to throw. That's the key. And Coach. Uh, to, you know what? I, I, I like the call right there. I do too, Coach. I really do. I think he sends a message to his team. We're playing the win. And then obviously the big play right here, the opening kickoff of the second half. Jacoby Jones, 109 yards, goes up the middle, just touched slightly right there, and he is gone. And right now we're looking at 28-6 to six as a score. And I'll tell you the one thing about when these lights come back on, how would you like to come back on, Shannon, and be facing third and 14? Hey. <laughs> I mean, that's, is that what it is? But that's 13 14. 14 right now. So, I mean, you better be talking about what play you got called. The, the player that it hurt is Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is 37 years old. Coach, you, 
he's been sitting on the sideline for the last 30 minutes. I need another 30 minutes to warm up and get ready yeah. to go back in the game. And the other thing, like I said, Joe Flacco, he's not even worried about warming up. He's standing there. He's cool as it can be in the first half. The three touchdowns, he's doing everything he needs to do to just win his first Super Bowl. He's played incredible throughout the playoffs. Unbelievable. Our offensive line has played great, and it's just showing up in this Super Bowl. You heard Solomon Wilcox mention that the league did not want to state definitively what caused the power outage. But our enterprising producer, Joe Zapula, went out to talk to the head official, the referee, Jerome Boger, who said that they will be resuming play in about 7 to 10 minutes. It is close to being full power restored here in the stadium. So within the next 7 to 10 minutes, they are expecting to get back underway. I wanted to know who's in charge for paying the power bill at the Superdome. Uh, because somebody didn't send a check in the mail. I, I, I want to see right here that this drive is going to be very critical. And if they do indeed have to punt in this situation, you know, I think it's going to be very important very important right now for the ball for the san francisco defense not just to stop them they, they need turnover. to get a turnover a turnover could cha change changes because if they don't and uh, baltimore can just even if they have to punt the ball the clock again is the greatest ally for the baltimore ravens we've talked so much about these two coaches jim harbaugh of san francisco john of course of baltimore and their coaching styles what would you guys based on your understanding of these two coaches what would you think they would be doing right now under these circumstances? Well, I think John Harbaugh, you know, he's just going to tell his team to relax. We've got to lead. You know, don't just get impatient with this whole thing. Understand the circumstances you're in. You're one half of football away or a little over half football away from your ultimate goal is winning a Super Bowl. And just be patient about the whole thing and understand it. When you get the ball back, use the clock. Don't be too aggressive. I think, I mean, yeah, and you yeah, take a look at John Harbaugh. He's the one who normally is very calm on the outside, but he's very animated right now as an explanation is being given to him. And on the clock, we and have been in this situation now for about 27 minutes without resuming play. John Harbaugh, not one who's very pleased with whatever the explanation that's being given to him. And I go back to what you guys have been saying collectively. You have to be he worried knows, about injury, hold on, too. He Go knows ahead. how close they are to winning the Super Bowl, so this can't be something he's feeling very good about. You talk about the 27-minute stoppage, the 30... Let, for more of an update, let's check in with Steve Tasker. Well, I did what everybody does when something goes wrong. I went to the guys in the middle of it wearing suits. They told me it was an outside power feed coming into the stadium that suddenly went dead. They had to go through a number of checklists to get the power resurgent. Now the strips on the sides of the stadium, the lighting strips are starting to come back on. Those are the final things. They also said this, we, before, play, before play resumes, each team will have a warm-up period. There's no restrictions. They can do whatever they feel is necessary to get ready to play. They will begin exactly from where this game cut out. Having said that, no question this is a bonus for the 49ers. That game, as Shannon Sharp said, was about to get away from them. The Niners took a deep breath, and now after about an hour of halftime with one play, a big kickoff return, they're about to get started playing once again. But as we said, I was told by the league, what they're hearing is it was an outside feed that came into the stadium, somehow got disrupted. Half the power went out almost right down the middle of the stadium, and it took that long to get all the systems and the checklists done before they could resume power. All right, Steve. Hey, Shannon, as a high-energy player, and that's putting it very nicely and modestly about your style of play, what kind of an effect potentially do you think this would have had on you? I would call the guys up and say, you know what? The power just didn't go out on us. They had to sit down and relax themselves. So let's not get carried away. That's something that we can't control. But what we can control is our ability to go out there and finish this game. We are... 25, 30 minutes away, Coach, right. from realizing our ultimate goal, and that's winning a Super Bowl. And again, you got to conscious yourself. You don't sit there and reflect on what could have been if you're right. the 49ers. You don't sit there and speculate what could be if you are the Baltimore Ravens. You still stay in the moment. You stay focused on what you have to do from play to play because we've seen this game change so dramatically. So staying in the moment, embracing the process right now, to me, is the most important thing for both these coaches. You know, and you think about uh, John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, you see John might be upset also because, you know, his theme is you got to worry about injuries, you know, in the second half. And, and, and you could have some bad injuries that could affect the game in the second half. All right, let's check upstairs with the game announcers, Jim Nance and Phil Sims. All right, thank you, uh, JB. We lost all power up here at the uh, press box level. 
Hey, the next time you decide to plug in your phone charger, give us a warning, will you? Yeah, well, okay. I, was, I was doing some of my best work during that blackout. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, as they mentioned, they're going to come back to a third and long, the 49ers. But uh, how do you think the teams will react to this? Well, I think they'll be fine. These guys are professional athletes. They, can, they know how to warm up, stop, and restart. And, and I'll tell you, there's still plenty of time in this game. I know it's third and long, but it's no time for the San Francisco 49ers to panic. I think the main thing is, I thought Bill Cow, Coach Cowher said it the right way, the San Francisco 49ers defense has to stop them three and out, make some plays to help their offense out. 31 minutes into this delay, and again, that was referenced earlier, but the 49ers were in this situation last year in December. Uh, in a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, there were two delays, in fact, due to blown transformers. First delay was just before kickoff, and it lasted about 20 minutes. Uh, the second delay occurred in the second quarter, and that went on for about 14 minutes. Well, you know, there for a minute, it was pretty exciting. I thought we were going to call the game from the sideline. Might add that for all those in the stands here, they've remained very calm throughout this. They have. Here's what it looked like. They're getting set to call a, a third and 14. Mm. So you've been hearing from our Super Bowl today studio team about some of their thoughts. Do you see any drastic changes coming back here for the 49ers once play resumes? No, I thought there was an interesting thing said there. I know I I know this. Colin Kaepernick is my man, and I'm going down with him in this game today, no matter how he plays and the thing about him is the legs where he can make a play and that big arm, that's how you're going to get back in this game. The joke, Jacoby Jones returned to start the second half. Yeah. Was, we both, you could hear it in our voices. We were a little surprised he was going to run it out. But did he ever? The longest kick return in NFL history. A little sim spotlight. You think he... Got there in a hurry. Yeah, he did. It, the line drive kick, that was a great read by J Jacoby Jones, but still nine yards back. You got the wonder, but look at the inside of the field. And you notice one thing as I watched that replay. All the 49ers stopped, and they were catching the block by the Ravens. Nobody able to react and get off their block to make the tackle against Jacoby Jones. 109 yards and 11 seconds, and even pulled up a little bit the last five or ten yards. So... Like an Olympic uh, trial run there for the 100 meters and beyond. Let's go down for another report. Thanks a lot, Jim. I was told when I was over on the Ravens sideline that their equipment, their electrical equipment, went right back up. They had no issues. It was on the 49ers sidelines that they were having difficulty. Their still print machine just went back on, and I was just told a few seconds ago that they now have Telex. That is one of the things that was holding it up. So now that they both have electrical equipment working, we should be able to see this process come back on quicker. Jim? Thank you, Tracy. See, Wolfson, and now we're hearing that play is going to resume here in the next minute. So it's going to be a delay and a little excess of 33, well, there it is, 34 minutes now. And when we receive a statement from the NFL, we'll pass that along. Resume, resume action. Third down and 13. Let's go. Officially, it's third and 13. For Kaepernick and the 49ers. Running away from Nata. And McPhee and takes the throw underneath. Helmets fly off for Walker, but it's only a gain of seven. It'll force the Niners to punt. 